Welcome back to Red Hawk Media. Today we're taking a look at lower thirds. And uh, we just want to cover some of the basics of some quick creation for the lower thirds um, so that you can create your own in Photoshop that you can take in the final cut. Um, here are some quick examples that we've got. And you can see that lower thirds are basically rectangles. We've got edges that are cut off. Um, you don't even have to cut the edges. We'll talk about skewing the rectangle. And one of the main tools that I really wanted to demonstrate here is how to add gradients on quickly and effectively. And you can see some of the other things. We've got stroke weights that are added on. We've got drop shadows. We've got outer glows, inner glows, and uh, even a bevel here it looks like. Um, so let's go ahead and get started here and go through some of the basics of a quick creation of a lower third. All right. So let's go up to... Uh, file. Let's create a new document. And depending on the size of the video that you're going to be dropping this onto, um, go ahead and put in the dimensions. Uh, for my particular projects here, we're going to add in um, 1920 by 1080. Another way that we can do this too so that uh, we know that it matches up is instead of typing these in manually like this and leaving this transparent, I can always go up to film and video. And then under film and video, I can change it up to whatever setting I happen to be using. Okay, we're actually going with uh, HDV, 1080p, 29.7, and there we go. We have it. Now, actually, let's go ahead and go back down to this one, HDTV. There we go. And we've got the settings. Now, I like these to be nice and crisp, so I put up the resolution a little bit higher to 150. Uh, it does make a slightly larger image size, but it is worth it because they look better. Okay, and um, then let's go ahead and go transparent, and we're ready to begin. All right, so here is basically the screen size of what we're going to be dropping our lower third onto, and we have to have some ideas of how we're going to use this lower third, and lower thirds come in from the left, they come in from the right. Um, we have to know where our character is going to be exactly or where the talent is going to be. Um, so what side we're going to actually drop it on. The one that we're going to, that I'll demonstrate here, and you can just kind of mirror whatever I'm doing, is just a lower left third here. And that's where we'll get started. So to begin with, probably the best tool to start with is your rectangle tool. right? And then you can go ahead and adjust your fill color to whatever it is that you want. Uh, chances are this is going to change anyway when we add a gradient. So let's uh, just go ahead and add this on here and add on the stroke weights, and we've got all that. And let's go ahead and draw a rectangle roughly for the lower third amount here. And there we have it. Now, it's okay if you have a little bit of it hanging off over on the edges here. That will not show up in your picture. It won't show up in the video. So we've, uh, we've got some flexibility there. Now, we've got a rectangle that's created. Um, we want to actually add a little bit more to this, so give it a little bit more of an interesting look. Um, and one of the ways to do that is to create a little bit of depth, and that is to put a gradient overlay on it. Okay, when at first you check this, it totally messes up your rectangle. But if you click on gradient overlay here, we can now go in to tweak the settings of the actual gradient. And actually, you know, this is not a bad gradient. Um, it's just uh, depending on what style you're looking for here. Um, and the first step would be to double click on the gradient itself, the color bar here. And we would go ahead and customize our gradient as to what we're looking for. Okay, we may be looking for a three-tone gradient here where we bring this in. And uh, then what we can do is we can actually hold Shift and Alt, I believe, and then we can drag this over, and it creates a new anchor point. If I double-click on any of these, it'll allow me to go ahead and come in here and customize my um, stuff here. And let's actually go with a black on this one. Go there, and let's go to red here, and we'll just do a quick mock-up of this, and then we've got this nice slick rate gradient here. All right, so that's how you can customize your gradient a little bit. Um, we've got a solid type gradient right now. You can add in noise if you want it to kind of appear like some of the video is showing through. And click OK there. Um, there are different types, types of radio as well. We can go to a radial gradient, okay, and then we can scale it so that it actually fits a little bit better to our particular size here. Um, the radial gradient and lower thirds not as uh, not as used. Um, we can go with an angle gradient. And just go ahead and go through these and try some different ones. We've got a reflected one, a diamond. Okay, um, but I'm just going to stick with the linear right now. 
and you can tinker with the 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 modes as well which will give it different looks I'm just gonna keep it normal for now okay now if I want to here I can adjust the scale a little bit of the gradient and you can see that it shrinks up and then it expands and maybe I want this to be mostly red but I want those edges to appear like it's kind of a rounded bar that I'm working with here so I can go ahead and expand that all right, now, other features that would be worthwhile adding on to this rectangle while I'm here, which are going to show up on the video and uh, make it appear like the lower third sitting in front of it, is um, a drop shadow. So I can add on a drop shadow, and it would be a good idea to go ahead and customize the angle of the light source. Uh, let's say that the light source is coming from up here, shining down. That's what I presently got and you can see the angle out here maybe I just want it to be straight up and down so that the actual uh, angle is just coming down from the top here it depends on again what kind of video that you're laying this over the top of I kinda like this angle over here though it gives me two dimensions of drop shadow alright now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and start adding on a few more things to make this interesting Okay. Um, one of the things that you'll see a lot of times is you'll see people do these selections um, and uh, parts of the parts of the lower third will be missing and an easy way to do that is just to use your uh, marquee tool here and uh, let's say that I know I'm gonna have a rotating logo that's gonna be over here and let's hold shift so we get a perfect circle and size that up go ahead and select this uh, it says warning no pixels are more than 50% selected selection edges will not be visible okay um, that's because I've got the feathering on so much so that that's just not working so we go ahead and dial this up again and we go ahead and make our selection and to tweak our selection we can go to transform selection and of course we can dial this up a little bit there we go and you get the idea here of what's going on. All right, I hit enter when I like what I see. Okay, so we've made a circular selection here. Um, before we can actually do anything to this layer, though, it's not going to let us interact with it very well um, because it is still a shape over here. Um, so what we're going to do is very quickly we're going to rasterize this, and we can right-click on it, and we can go to rasterize layer. And then what that will allow us to do is actually make these cuts. So um, now that I've got my selection, I can hit delete and I'll actually cut that out of there and now if I wanted I could take this as a template into like After Effects something along those lines and then I could add in like an emblem here that rotates in 3D or has a special little animation on it something like that and I'm just kinda of prepping everything here you can also see that it's added the drop shadow into here um, I mean you, you could do a number of different things with this um, a lot of times lower thirds are a number of different layers um, that are occurring so if I wanted to I could go ahead and create a new layer here let's drag this layer actually below the rectangle and let's go back to my original rectangle here with the uh, fill and go ahead and draw that so that it actually shows up just behind there and then I could just resize that command T and then drop this down so that it's actually out of sight here and grab that like so and now I've created this cool little cutout that has a backdrop to it. Um, there's a lot of things like that. The other thing that you'll see that is uh, pretty common too, let's go ahead and create another new layer. Uh, let's drop this one on top. Actually, let's keep this one behind too. And we're going to just draw another rectangle. And it's going to be not quite as long as the other one here. And let's go with that width right there. And then we just take this and we drag it down to the bottom here and we have that appearing out now I'd want to take all of these probably because a lower third looks a little bizarre if it goes all the way to the bottom and let's go ahead and just shift click all of these try that again shift click there we go go to my move tool and now I can just take this and uh, hopefully I can move it up like that right there okay oh I still have a selection that's on there weird okay and uh, there we go. That's uh, some of the process of what we can do. A few other things, a lot of times you won't see lower thirds that are squared off at the end like this. So you can change that up just by going over to your rectangle and you can go to edit and your free transform or to transform and go skew. Okay. And what that allow you to do is actually take the corners 
and lean them out like this um, so that you get your more customized shape and then I would do the same thing to my lower rectangle here um, and uh, go up to edit and transform and uh, oh, this one can't do anything with it until I rasterize it go to rasterize and let's go to edit transform skew there we go and then I just grab the same corner I drag it out get roughly the same angle and there we go alright so go ahead tinker around here I can see what you can come up with with a creative lower third that's got a unique feel you want to have enough room for whatever the title is that you're gonna put on there a description if there's like an extra like a uh, ticker that's going across the bottom or extra information that is relevant to whatever you're putting this on uh, create another bar like this um, create some cool cutouts in it um, use transparency as well at the ends um, so that it blends into your video and it seems more of a natural thing uh, just try a bunch of different stuff here though um, your main goal is to make a lower third that will sit properly over your movie clip though thanks again for joining us for another episode of red hawk media